Hello there, beautiful. Hey, if you are brand new to studying the Bible and you have absolutely no idea what to do, you are in the right place because I am Nikki Trake, founder of Crazy Simple Truth Ministries, and I teach you how to study the Bible. So if you're brand new to this and you're like, what on earth do I do? Like maybe you've been going to church for years and you've just never studied it on your own. Maybe you're a brand new Christian and you're ready to study it. The important thing you need to know is that as a Christian, but it is our job to search the scriptures and learn from them, okay? It's it's essential because we don't know God unless we read this. We can't trust what our pastor says or our neighbor says or our father says. We have to trust what God says, and he speaks to us through the scriptures. So if you are a Christian, you need to be studying the Bible, not just the Sunday sermon, okay? You need to be studying it. So this is great news because this is why I'm here. It's super Simple. And I'm just going to show you today some really basic things you can do to study the Bible as a super duper beginner. So the very first thing I want to say is you want to have a Bible translation that is easy to read. Okay. Different Bible translations were translated in different ways by different people. Most of them, the ones that you're going to look at anyway, have an entire group of scholars that have gotten together and looked at the original manuscripts or the most recent manuscripts that we have, and they have translated it into a way that they think would be the easiest for us to understand. Some of them are a little bit too easy to understand, and so you have to be careful of those. I'm going to suggest some to you that are easy to understand, but yet still say the truth of God's word as best as they can, right? So English Standard Version is ESV. That one works really well for that. Also, the um, NIV, which is the New International Version, the HCSB, it's by Holman, and Holman also makes a CSB, and those are great too, okay? Um, so those are ones that are going to help you read it simply, but be able to understand it. Okay, if you really, really, really get confused, even with those, you can read the NLT and that is the New Living Translation. The New Living Translation is a great Bible. However, it should not be your main Bible to study with. But if you are a brand new beginner and you're just overwhelmed with it all, the NLT, New Living Translation, is a wonderful Bible to read. Okay, then, so you're going to need an easy to read Bible. Then you're going to need three colored pencils, colored pens, highlighters, whatever it is. I love these mild liners. They do bleed through a tiny bit. But I love them, um, and I use three colors because I've tried so many different color coding things, and it's so overwhelming, and I just feel like, let's simplify this. Like, let's make this as easy as possible so it's enjoyable, and that's what I want it to be for you. So you need three colors. One color, you're going to highlight every time you see God. The second color, you're going to highlight words that are different or interesting, or maybe you don't know what they mean. You're going to highlight those words, okay? And then you're going to highlight, highlight an entire verse that stands out, or two verses. There's no right or wrong in this, but this three-color code system makes Bible study so much easier easier. You don't want to become chained to thinking that you have to do it this way and this way and this way. You want to make it simple. Simple is three colors. God, words that stand out or are interesting, and scriptures, verses that stand out. So a scripture is a verse, and a verse is broken up in the Bible so that you can find things you need to find again. So these are sentences that have been broken up in certain places in order to be able to locate what you're looking for. So this is the book of John. John is a great book of the Bible. This is about Jesus's life and his ministry. And John says, chapter one, verse one. So this is verse one. And then you get into verse two. This is verse three. So when your pastor says, I want you to turn to John 1, 14, you're gonna turn to John 1, and then you're gonna go to verse 14. It says, the word became flesh and took up his residence among us, all right? That is how you find it. Now, one other thing I want you to know about the scriptures that's easy enough is this is on BibleGamesCentral.com. This is free. This is adorable. Bible Games Central. And it's .com right here. This is free. It's adorable. It's going to tell you the Old Testament books 
and the New Testament books. And it's going to tell you what they are. So the books of the Bible are stuck together under categories of what kind of writing they are. So the law books are the first five. These are the story of God's people. And we're included in this because when God made Adam and Eve, he, made, he, he had his plan to make all of us in the future, okay? Then the history. So this is the history of the Hebrew people. We can learn things from every single verse in this Bible. I promise you that. It's overwhelming. Don't let it be. Just stick with me. Poetry. These are great. Um, just fun reading, really comforting sometimes. Um, you could read a proverb a day. There's 31 proverbs. So even if you're brand, brand new to Bible study, you could commit to reading one proverb verse. So proverb 1-1, one, one, proverb 1-2, Proverb 1 3, and you could read a proverb every day. When you see God mentioned, highlight him in yellow. If it's talking about Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the Word, those are all God. Highlight them in yellow. If you see a word that you don't know what it means, highlight it in blue. And if you see a verse and it really stands out to you and you're like, wow, that was really good, highlight the whole verse. That simple. Okay? Next are the prophets. The prophets are men who God spoke through. So these are men who God gave a message to and they spoke it out loud to the Hebrew people. These are wonderful too. You can learn a lot from the prophets, but I want you to know about this is the minor prophets and the major prophets are the same. They're equally important. All right. The only reason they're divided in major and minor is because these books are longer. These prophets had more to say, right? These are smaller. They're, they're all equally important and they're all part of the Old Testament. When you get to Malachi, there was 400 years, 400 years, listen to that, 400 years of complete silence from God. Was God still involved? Oh, yes, he was, but he was silent. He did not speak through one of his prophets, okay? But then after 400 years, Kaboom! Jesus was born. Hello! And the rest is history, as they say. So the Gospels is the New Testament. Old Testament before Christ. New Testament after Christ. We have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. These are the foundation of our faith, okay? Then you get to Acts. This is a history book. This is going to tell you the history of the church. So the church is what Jesus started, and this is the history of the church, very important book also. Then you've got the letters, and these are all actually letters. Even Revelation is a letter, but it's a prophecy letter. So let me let me st step back for a second, okay? You've got your Gospels written about Jesus's life. You've got Acts written about the church history. Then you've got the letters from the Apostle Paul. He was an amazing man, super cool, super cool. You can learn a ton from these letters. If you are looking for a book of the Bible to just start with, James is a great one. Paul didn't write it. James did. He's Jesus' brother. And this has a lot of wisdom from the Old Testament and a lot of wisdom from Jesus' words himself. And so this is a great book to start with. Any of these letters are going to teach you things that you can live out in your life right now. So if you're brand new, and let's say you already know about Jesus, you already know, you feel like you have the foundation about Jesus, but you really want to dive into the Bible, start with one of the letters, okay? One of the letters, um, I, I really think James is a great one. James is a great one. Romans is good. They're so good. They're all so good, okay? But start in one of those, something simple, right? So... If you start with the gospel because you don't have any knowledge of the story of Christ, his birth, his ministry, his death, his resurrection, and then his ascension into heaven, if you don't have knowledge of that, I suggest you start with Luke. But Mark is a super fast book. It's super fast. It's super short, super fast. It's very rewarding to go through Mark because it's so easy. Um, and John is a great one that a lot of people suggest you start with. So Matthew's awesome too. All right. They're all awesome. Just pick one. This is the important part about Bible study. Don't just flip open your Bible and expect to study it just opening it somewhere. Have a plan. A plan. So this is your first step in Bible study, besides praying, of course, always pray because you have the Holy Spirit in you and he is a teacher. Like how, how many other times in your life do you actually have the author of the book telling you how, what it's about? I mean, really, this is, this is a good deal we got going on with God here. A good deal. Okay. So 
ask him to help you. And then you need to pick one book. Stick with one book, one book, one book. Okay, you can read other parts of the Bible. You can go and read a proverb a day, but study one book. Commit to it, all right? So let's say you're going to study the book of John, which is a wonderful book to start with. Let me show you what you're going to do. You are going to look for God. So you're going to read this, chapter one, because you're going to always start at the beginning of the book. The Bible has 66 books. So when I say the beginning of the book, I mean the book of John. John is a book in the Bible. So the Bible is 66 books of important stuff about God, right? He put it all there for a reason. It was very carefully put there. It's been very carefully preserved for thousands of years, okay? So we're going to find God. In the beginning was the Word, all right? The Word is God. Now, how do you know that, Nikki? Well, this is the HCSB version. They don't actually make the HCSB anymore. It's now the CSB, but the HCSB is still for sale, and I love it because they capitalize things when they're referring to God. So Word is capitalized here, and then I know, oh, that's talking about God. So Jesus is the Word. It says, in the beginning was the Word. So I'm going to highlight the Word. And then it says, and the word was with God. The word was with God. Okay, that's because Jesus was with God. And the word was God. Now, people say that it doesn't say in the Bible that Jesus is God. What does that mean right there? The word was God. What does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? If, if the, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God, God is the word, right? Okay, there you go. He was with God in the beginning. So he is a person. If you're talking about the word and you're thinking they mean the Bible, he is a person. He, so he is God, was with God in the beginning. All things were created through him. Apart from him, not one thing was created that has been created. Life was in him. And that life was the light of men. That light shines in the darkness, yet the darkness did not overcome it. Now, light is not highlighted here. However, I think that it's talking about God. It may not be, but to me, I want to highlight it. So, and that life was the light of men, because Jesus is our light. And that light shines in the darkness, yet the darkness did not overcome it, okay? Maybe it doesn't mean Jesus. I don't know. But here's the thing about Bible study. You don't have to have it all right. You don't have to have it all right. Just grab a Bible, grab a highlighter, and go for it, right? Now, let's see if I found any words that stood out to me there. Um, maybe the word, what about created, okay? I know what the word created is. I, I create things all the time. I know what the word created is, but what does it mean here? What does it mean that it says if not one thing was created that has been created? Okay, well, created is an interesting word, and here's the cool thing. It's mentioned a couple of times there, so that means it's important. Whenever you see a word more than once within one little section, that means that that's important. So we're talking about creation, okay? So I can look that up then in the English or the Greek dictionary. I will show you how to do that in another video. It's super simple, super simple, okay? But it's an important skill to have, and I know that you can do it. It sounds intimidating, but I promise you, if I can do it, anybody can do it, okay? So then you would do that. Then you're going to look for a verse that stands out. Okay, well, Nikki, all kinds of verses there stand out to me. So which one do I want to do? I think... um. I could pretty much highlight that whole thing. So let me look again. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So I love in the beginning was the word. So this is verse one. In the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was, or with God, and the word was God. All right, so I could highlight that whole thing. He was with God in the beginning, and then that's verse one and two. So I highlighted verse one and two. The next thing you can do is you can take a pen. Either you can use a notebook or you can write right in your note-taking or journaling Bible. You can get these very inexpensively these days, especially the HCSB. And you just take a simple little pen here, any kind of pen, and you're just going to write a note about this. So you could write why you wanted to say this. What did you observe here, okay? Remember when you were in school and you had to write about what you read. So what are you seeing here? Who is mentioned? What are they doing? 
why are they doing it, how are they doing it, and just write those simple little facts down. So you would write, um, in the beginning was the word, okay? So I'm gonna put the word, and I'm gonna put the word, and I'm just gonna put an arrow, was in the beginning. What else do I know about the word? The word was with God. The word was with God. With. And the word was God. So what do I what do I get from that? Well, that tells me Jesus is the word. Whoops. Jesus is God. I messed that up. Okay. See, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be fancy. That's what I got out of that. So that's what I wrote down. Write it in a notebook if you don't feel comfortable with it. Okay. Just write it in a notebook. So you're going to look for God first. He's the most important thing. All right. You're going to highlight some words that are standing out to you that you may want to look up later. You're going to highlight a verse that stands out to you that you want to look at in more in depth. And then you're just going to write some simple notes about who's doing what and why. You want to look at what's mentioned about God, whether it's directly or indirectly. And you want to look at what the people are doing and why. Well, we don't know any people here. We do know about creation. It says all things were created through him. So what things were created? It says all things. And apart from him, not one thing was created. So we know about creation here. What else do we know? Life was in him. So the word um, says life was in him and the, the life was the light of men. So Jesus is God. Jesus is life and light. All right. So you could write that. Then it goes on to say there was a man named John who was sent from God. So you'd write, see the sections, see how they're, they're basically paragraphs. They're divided into sections. All Bibles do this. Read a section. That's a complete thought right there. So then read the next one. There was a man named John who was sent from God. God. He came as a witness to testify about the light. So there's the light again, which I'm assuming is Christ. So that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but he came to testify about the light. So John was not the light, but he came to testify about the light. The true light who gives light to everyone was coming into the world. Is that not beautiful? Oh, this is beautiful. Okay, so there was a man named John. So we're going to write John. We're learning about John. Well, let me see if there's any words I want to look at. How about witness and testify? Those are interesting to me. And testify is actually mentioned twice. So that's something I may want to look up. And then is there a verse that stands out? There doesn't always have to be. You may read six sections and have nothing in it to highlight. It may not have mentioned God. It may not have a word that's interesting to you. It may not have a verse that stood out to you. That's okay. All right? But let's see if I can find one here. There was a man named John who was sent from God. He came as a witness to testify about the light so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but he came to testify about that light. The true light who gives light to everyone who was coming into the world. Now, what did I learn here? Well, this is talking about Jesus again. So John sent from God. What do I know about John? He was sent from God. Whoops, I forgot to write from. Sent from God. He was a witness. What do I know about John? He was a witness. He came to testify. He came to testify and help people believe, help others believe. So you're just writing the facts. What are you seeing here? What's happening? It says um, the true light. So we're talking about Jesus again. The true light. Don't worry about writing in your Bible, okay? Don't be afraid to do it. It's so important. Just do it. All right, just do it. Interact with God's word. Get yourself into it, okay? And don't be afraid to write it. Don't be afraid to mess up. Don't be afraid to highlight the wrong thing on accident. It's okay. It's okay. The true light. What does the true light do? It gives light to everyone. Gives light. What else does the true light do? It was coming into the world. The world. All right. 
So there it is. Now I've taken notes and I've done that on both of those sections. So now you would go in then and you would define your words. And there's some different ways that you can do these things, okay? Look at other translations of the Bible. So if I'm looking at the HCSB, then I might want to read the ESV and look at what it says that's different. And then I'm going to write down if something was interesting that was different. I'm just going to make a little note here. NIV says this. NLT says this. Make a little note, okay? Then you can do that with the verses too. You can look at anything interesting from the other translations that said it a little bit differently than this one did and make a little note in there. Add it in, okay? Then you're going to look for cross reference verses. You're going to need some free tools to use that. Some of you may have a study Bible and it may have a dictionary in the back and it may have cross reference verses. So observation, observe the facts. Interpretation, what did it mean to these people who were reading it? Okay, when John wrote this down, he wrote it down for a specific person or group of people for a reason. He didn't write it to Nikki Drake, okay? So when he wrote it, he had a reason. So who was he writing to? Well, maybe that's something you need to look up. You need to know. In the front of the study Bibles, it will tell you when the letter was written, who wrote it, who they were writing to, where they were at when they wrote it. Those things are helpful because you want to interpret what it means. What did it mean when John was writing it? And what does it mean to me now? And in order to do that, you have to be able to look at definitions and cross-reference verses from other verses in the Bible, okay? But I'll show you how to do that in, in the next video. Then, that's interpretations. You've got observation, interpretation, and application. I could take this right here without the interpretation, and I could apply it, all right? Just like a SOAP Bible study, I could apply it. It's not an in-depth study, and it's definitely not somewhere you want to stay. But for right now, let me show you how you could do that. So you're going to look at what's happening again, and you're going to think, okay, well, God did this, so what does this have to do with me? Well, I, I could say, you know, God created me. I was created by God, and since it says he was the life, he, um, his life was the light of men, that means he's the light in me. So I could write, God created me. He is the light in me. Um, he shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot, cannot overcome it. Therefore, I am safe with God in the light, right? You could just take what you read and figure out how it's going to work for you, all right? Ask yourself questions like, well, what's mentioned about God? What's he doing? Is what he's doing positive? Is it negative? Who's mentioned? John. Well, what's John doing? Is John doing a good thing? Yes, John's doing a good thing. What's John doing? Well, he's a witness and he's testifying. So what if I said, I need to be a witness and I need to testify about Christ? I want to help others believe that is applying the Bible to your life, okay? You can write it down in a notebook and pray it back to God. You can just make a note here. I want to be a witness. I want to testify and help others believe. I want to remember that the true light is in me and that is Christ. Make a little note here. You could date it if you wanted to. So when you go back and look, it's a wonderful thing to go look at. That's all there is to it. That's all there is to it. It's that easy. Seriously, watch the next video. I will show you exactly how to define the words that you chose and how to look for cross-reference verses. You can study the Bible, girlfriend. I promise you, you can. I promise you, you can. I promise you, you can. It's easy. It's doable. And that is what I'm about. So make sure you subscribe and I will see you later. You're beautiful. Bye.